Indeed, uh, we had an inquiry from, uh, uh, from uh, uh, people working with uh, um, contaminated uh, sediments and water in a, in a uh, container ship um, uh, and uh, really useful also because it's such a small diameter you can put it into very, uh, very uh, narrow wells. So that is the uh, bomb sampler and... Uh, Aluminium sampling set? Aluminium sampling set. Right, so now we get into... Uh, there's lots of parts to this. Uh, Let's put it all together. Where you want to take samples uh, which are very, very uh, loose, uh, for example in tanks, but uh, also uh, generally for any material which is, uh, which, is, uh, 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 which is not cohesive, so an ordinary sample will not, uh, will not work. Uh, we have a, a system here where, which enables us to take uh, undisturbed samples into very loose material. The set is made of aluminium. All it is uh, is um, an aluminium tube and the reason it's aluminium uh, is important. It's aluminium because um, it's very light material. So it is, uh, it is absolutely possible to take this set uh, up to a depth of uh, uh, 10 meters um, uh, without it really uh, straining uh, uh, because it's too heavy. Samples are taken in a liner. So we have the, the chamber which takes the liner, the liner just slips in on the inside and then on the other side we put a cutting shoe. Standard cutting shoe and incidentally uh, in these circumstances you may well need to use a core catcher because uh, 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 the sample may, may, may disappear. Alternatively, we can use a completely different type of head which is actually part of the set. It is part of the set. Part of the set. And uh, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, we call this a butterfly valve. Uh, you can see it in its open position here, but if I close it it, it, the valve, the butterfly valve uh, closes and so you, you, you have really good sample retention. So uh, very straightforward, uh, liner inside, you put your cutting shoe of choice and generally it'll be the open, uh, the, the open uh, shoe uh, which, has, which has no restriction at all and Uh, then at the top, uh, so then you have two choices, so we have a liner here. How long is the liner? About it's uh, 30 centimeters, so it comes in, in, in liners of 30 centimeters. You can use it singly, but interestingly you can actually stack a couple of cylinders together, so I'm going to do that now, and that's to work with another, uh, another chamber, just screws on the top. And now, effectively, you've got a 60 centimeter line sample. This is pushed into the soil, uh, into your, 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 your sediment, uh, again from a boat or from, from a bridge, and uh, down to the depth, and the sample will be captured within a liner. 50 millimeter in diameter, 300 uh, millimeters in, uh, in length. So you can, like here, I've stacked two, one behind, one behind the other. The extension rods are uh, very light aluminium, uh, these, uh, these square connection, uh, square uh, uh, extension rods, and a very small handle which goes, uh, which goes over the top. Again, with a, with a, 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 um, a pin, but this is a different connection uh, because the material is very much lighter. Uh, this is a, 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 a different. Uh, it's not a hex. It's a square. It's a square pin. Um, question, Vincent. How? What's the maximum depth? Would you recommend going to? I would say up to ten meters is not a problem with this. 
but it's, it is for very soft sediments, so this will not work in hard sediments. Uh, um, uh, we've been doing this for, for 40 years and I would say that the request, uh, the, the, the difficulty is always sampling uh, in soft sediments. Hard sediments are easier because they're cohesive, they stick together and you do not lose the sample. Whereas with, uh, with uh, soft sediments there is a very high risk of losing the sample which is why we have all these different devices. Incidentally the set comes with a standard auger because sometimes you will uh, take, uh, take the sample, let us say, uh, down to the groundwater level uh, uh, and, and then you'll find that you can't retrieve the sample any longer. So you start with a standard uh, uh, auger and then once you've achieved the depth where it's getting very sloppy, you can move to a lined type, uh, a, a lined type sampler. Um, what is important, and this is an item that you'll see later on again, uh, I don't think many of you will have seen this type of auger. Um, it's a... It's a planar auger? Uh, we call it a... Planar auger. <laughs> <a planer laughs> auger. And uh, I mentioned earlier how important it is to make sure that your taking the sample in as undisturbed a manner as possible, knowing exactly where you are. And you can imagine that if you use one of these augers, uh, where does the sample begin when you insert uh, the, the next sampler? It's, it, it's, it's somewhere in between there and here. And where you need very, uh, where, where you need very accurate samples, we use a planar auger and all that this, is do this does is when you lower that to the level where you want to start taking the sample, you twist this and essentially it just planes, it gives you a very flat surface of where you're going to start sampling. Hope that makes sense. Um, question we get asked a lot is uh, um, particularly from uh, PhD students, uh, they, 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 they uh, do research and they want uh, 2,000 samples and, and, and my advice over all these decades has been when you take soil samples, take a good amount of few samples is always better than a very large amount of bad samples. So uh, um, uh, when it comes to uh, sediment sampling, uh, getting the accuracy, knowing where it is you're taking the sample from, have I made sure there's no cr cross-contamination, uh, do I know exactly what my horizon is, can I measure very precisely. If, if you are able to do that with these tools uh, which are available, you will get extremely good representative and undisturbed samples of your, uh, of your sediment. So, um, that is the tank sampler. So, we are going to talk about Russian corals. Yep. Vicky, take over. So, this is a Russian corals. You can hold it. Hold it. Thank you. <laughs> You, I think a lot of you have probably seen this sampler before. It's a Russian Cora head. It takes undisturbed peat samples. Um, it's half a metre long, 50 millimetre diameter. Um, we sell this as part of a set and within the set um, you've got two extension rods which um, are 1.2 metres long each and a handle and it comes in a hard carrying case. Um, you can also extend, um, extend the, um, the peat sampler and we sell the extension rods individually as well. Um, yeah. For those of you who haven't used it, <laughs> it's, a, it's a, a relatively straightforward uh, tool. You see here, uh, I'm turning this, the fin. The fin is what provides a resistance. So uh, let us say that you're interested in the horizon from 3.5 to, uh, to 4 meters. You can insert this in a closed position, so right down until you get to, uh, to uh, 3 meters 50. At, th at that stage, uh, really all you need to do is to twist the sampler around its axis 
And now it's captured the sample within the chamber. And as uh, Icky says, that chamber is, uh, is, uh, 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 has a length of, uh, let's see if I can show the picture there like, like that. So the chamber, the empty chamber is 50 centimeters and the diameter is uh, 50 millimeters. So you get a really, really nice undisturbed sample. And it's also great for very loose sediments, uh, muds. Uh, uh, people call this either Russian cora or some people call it a peat auger, but I think it's wrong to assume that this is only valid for, um, for peat. Uh, a, a lot of the applications are for very, very soft sediments. Um, they are not lined, which means that uh, uh, they are there for descript descriptive purposes. You can also subsample that, but uh, um, in, in order to retrieve the sample, uh, you're going to get some disturbance. Uh, if you want the whole profile, uh, you will try and empty this in a, in a piece of guttering or something like that. Just uh, 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 close it, you will have the sample here and you can tip that inside uh, a container which is 50 centimeters long. A very popular item, I think, That's this really isn't popular. it? popular, yeah. Um. Typical depths. Okay, so mostly to four to five meters. Um, I have had people who want to go to 10 meters um, in Scotland, peatlands. Um, but I would say uh, generally it is to people tend to get enough extensions to go to five, six metres, but I wouldn't go beyond 12 metres. Again, it's uh, in the hex uh, quick pin. We don't generally recommend that these are, uh, these are struck in position. It is possible to apply a little bit of pressure, so potentially you could use uh, you could use uh, uh, the... Um, you can hammer it in, uh, the slide hammer. The slide hammer to do this. But uh, it is not for cohesive soils. And this is important because if you use it in stiff clays, for example, you will end up uh, uh, twisting, uh, twisting these devices. They're, they're quite uh, heavy duty, but they, they are made for uh, soft sediments um, and, and, and they should not be used in, uh, in, in more cohesive materials for which you will have other devices. So that's the uh, Russian Cora, or, or, or as some people call it, a, a peat auger set. And whilst we're on peat, uh, yeah. a, a very, very, very popular device. Yeah. Uh, so if you've got a Russian Cora, you definitely need one of these. These one of these. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many of you uh, have uh, have seen this. Typically, it's called a utility probe. So yeah. I think that's what the main name for it. Utility but probes. It's also a peat probe. It's a probing rod. And, 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 <laughs> and I will call it a probing rod probing then. <laughs> um, uh, 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 when you need to know the thickness of peat, this is what you will use. Uh, a fiberglass rod, so really, really light, at the base of which there is a, uh, a steel tip. And this is uh, inserted in your, uh, in your peat. And you push it in, into the peat, uh, of course, with a, with, a, with a handle on top. You push it into the peat until, you until you hit resistance. Now, when you feel that resistance, it means that you have moved out of the peat layer into something which is more cohesive and uh, you retrieve, you, 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 you mark off, and we would recommend just using a bit of uh, electrical tape or duct tape around there to see to what depth, so in this particular case, if you can see it, you'd put a little marker here, you retrieve the item, and then you just measure uh, uh, the, the insertion depth of the, uh, of the uh, uh, probe, and that gives you the thickness of the layer of peat, uh, used in huge quantities, I think, isn't it? Huge quantities. Um, I would say also the maximum depth about 10 to 12 meters. 10 to 12 meters. Yeah, so the, um, the, if you can buy, obviously, these can, two connected together is 1.2 meters, and the extension rods are 94 centimeters in length. Yeah, un unusual size, 94 centimeters, but it is what it is. Uh, uh, but, but, but actually, you'll be measuring this when, uh, once you've retrieved it. So these all slip together, and they are not part of the Russian chorus set, I think. They're not part of the Russian chorus set. You can buy those in addition to. Yeah. 
Uh, but they'll fit nicely inside the case. Yeah, it's actually <laughs> a, a pretty handy to, to, yeah. to have those two items together. Um, they are made of fiberglass for those who are uh, for those who are um, uh, just so that you know. Uh, so you should be using uh, gloves when you uh, when you use this device. But you you should be using gloves anyway when you saw sampling. So that is uh, what we call this the peat probe, I think. Peat probe, utility probe. Utility probe. So. Next on the item is bulk density. Uh, bulk density, please, uh, Rosie. Bulk density rings, ring sets. Uh, where you want to measure the soil bulk density. I do apologise, Benson. That wasn't the next thing. It's actually the soil recovery auger. But oh. we can talk about bulk oh, density. Well, I'll, I'll we continue on bulk density. <laughs> um, it's relatively straightforward. If you need to determine uh, bulk density of, uh, of a soil, uh, uh, you need to use, uh, you need to take a, a very, very precise volume of sample. And uh, we do this by using sample rings. So this is a, an outer chamber. If I unscrew that, inside there is a very uh, precisely milled uh, um, cylinder, all made of stainless steel. And this is the cylinder which will capture your very accurate uh, 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 volume of sample. If you know the volume of sample and you weigh that wet and then you dry it at 104 degrees overnight. Uh, you, you then uh, uh, weigh it again and you determine the bulk density of your uh, soil in that particular manner. Uh, the reason we use an, uh, an outer cutting shoe is that we don't want to damage the ring. So the ring has got to be uh, in an um, uh, undamaged state. Uh, we use this purely as a, an insertion protection, so we, we slip the ring in there, put a cap on, close it, and then you can hammer down to whichever depth you want. You retrieve it, and uh, just a little explanation, how do I make sure that the sample is correct? Uh, as you can imagine, there will be uh, uh, at the at the bottom, there'll be a bit of soil sticking out, and the the best way to do that is just to use a very small uh, hacksaw and just very gently cut the soil completely flush with uh, with the ring. Of course, the rings are capped, uh, so they they uh, uh, they they will uh, um, uh, uh, come with these little blue caps, and you can write on them. Uh, uh, what the location is, uh, what, what the depth is, and, and, and so forth. So, uh, tell us about the kit. Yeah, Sophie. so the bulk density um, does come as a kit. Within the set is our two augers, um, so a uh, open-faced auger and a normal mud bucket auger. Um, you also get a handle with that, a half metre extension rod, and the slide hammer, so that hammer in. Thing with the red handle <laughs> and um, it's all can and, and the rings you get 25 rings 50 caps and they come in a nice aluminium case as well and it's all contained uh, within a pelly case and you get a few little accessories in there as well and you get the uh, the um, planar planar, order, planar uh, order, uh, yeah. again it's really really important because you can imagine if you uh, if you don't have a flat surface and you insert the ring at an angle, you're, you're not going to get the, uh, the, the profile that you want. So we want to insert that absolutely on a flat base so that you, 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 don't, you don't have uh, uh, air in there. And uh, you would use a planar auger to make sure that that level where you start sampling uh, is absolutely flat so that when you, when you push in the ring, uh, it is actually filled in its, in its entirety with, uh, with your sediment. I think there's a recurring pattern here, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating this, but take a good sample, few good samples rather than many bad samples. Okay. And, and, and that goes really with all this, uh, all this equipment which is, uh, uh, which is uh, um, 
on, on display here, here this morning. Uh, anything more to say about the uh, bulk density kits? I mean, these are stand, yeah. uh, pretty standard kits. So uh, with the, with um, these sets, um, they come a standard uh, 50 millimeter diameter. Um, yeah. Great. So Very that much. is the bulk density set, which now is you, out of sequence. And, <laughs> now you can uh, go to uh, the uh, soil uh, recovery uh, order, which is one of my favorite, uh, one oh, of my oh, favorite oh, systems. <laughs> Um, okay, where are we? Um, let's uh, put that there. Um, sometimes we want to take a, a very, very precise um, sample from a very specific horizon and we want to capture those uh, we want to capture those uh, samples in a uh, in a liner, as we've uh, mentioned often often before. But uh, this set is 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 really interesting because you may not be interested in the top layers. And if we if we look at something, um, let's talk about uh, soil organic uh, uh, content. Um, um, you don't really want to take a sample of the top 10 centimeters because it'll be contaminated. So you want to sample deeper, but not only that, you want to be absolutely sure that you're taking a sample of, let us say, uh, 10 to 30 centimeters and 30 to 50 centimeters. But you may not be interested in this top layer, so you can just use the standard auger with this particular cutting head on there go down to the depth where your sample, uh, where you want to start, uh, uh, where you want to start your sample, a sample for research. Having reached that, you disconnect the handle, and you put a slightly different handle on them, one which is closed at the top, making sure that you then put a liner into the system, close it off, and continue, continue. Uh, auguring down, and as you can imagine, as you auger down, that uh, that uh, uh, liner will be uh, f uh, full of uh, sediment in an absolutely perfect um, a representation of the horizon that you have gone through. And here's an example which we took outside. Now, this is a slightly bigger size, so here we have a sample from uh, uh, at 50 centimeters. And you're capturing that um, uh, that sample within uh, within the liner at a specific depth, so you know what profile it's coming from. As you see, this is slightly wider diameter. They are available in uh, in uh, in two diameters. The standard is the 50 millimeter diameter, but if you want to go slightly larger, which size about, is this? It's about. 75 millimeters. 75, okay. Millimeter. Uh, yeah. uh, I mean, this is quite a handful uh, uh, to, to, to take with you. It gets progressively harder, so the 50, uh, 50 centimeters is really useful. Uh, really good for uh, pesticide uh, residue uh, uh, research, uh, soil organic carbon content. Um, Anything really which uh, uh, which which needs to be extremely accurate within uh, within the profile, and a very similar tool is what we call a um, a, a, a split a split liner, and that is what it is. It's a liner. It's a it's a stainless steel tube which is in two halves. So really, really easy to retrieve the sample. And it can be used in two ways. It can be used um, with a liner, but maybe that is not necessary in all cases. And then you can take the sample without the liner and you can photograph it, uh, 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 put in your, your description uh, of, your, uh, of your core. And indeed, if you want, you can uh, you can cut off portions uh, and subsample in that particular way. Um, I've mentioned soil organic uh, uh, carbon content quite a lot. It's one of these um, one of these things that is uh, 
uh, uh, which has become so important uh, in the last uh, uh, in the last year or so, and there is more and more request for a, uh, a sampling tool uh, for uh, the determination of that SOC, and the split tube sampler is a really good way to do it. So with a liner. Uh, 40 centimetres long? Yeah, 40 centimetres long. Uh, 40 centimetre long. Uh, 50 millimetre uh, diameter. In 50 millimetre diameter. So either with a liner or uh, without a liner. Uh, incidentally, um, should you want to uh, take samples to uh, determine the um, volatile organic carbon content, um, we cannot use a plastic liner, it, uh, it, it's translucent to the volatile, so you can't use that. Again, it's a really good way to, uh, to, to use this sort of sampler. You could put a stainless liner or an aluminium liner inside here and capture that profile for the determination of VOCs uh, if you are um, of an economical turn and say, well, I'm going to be only uh, interested in the middle portion of my sample. You could even retrieve this and just wrap the sample immediately with aluminium foil. Yes, you will lose some volatiles uh, from, uh, from the surface, but it's a way perhaps of capturing samples for VOCs as well. We would recommend to go for a stainless liner or, or indeed an aluminium liner to give you a better uh, to give you a better sample. So the split tube sampler, does that come as a kit? It does, yes. So um, it comes obviously with the split tube sampler. Um, you've got half a metre extension rod in there. Um, one of the handles you saw earlier with the small shaft and the famous slide hammer. Along with a planar auger as well and a Dutch auger. Nice advantage. It's a nice big sample. This isn't it. it it's is. uh, it's uh, forty yeah, centimeters. Yeah. It's really handy. These samplers have been very popular over the last year as well. So especially mm. with the stainless steel liners mm. and aluminium liners. Uh, an interesting application could also be, uh, and, and again, something that that is becoming more and more in, in vogue are, are are the tests for. Uh, uh, residual uh, nitrogen, uh, uh, so mineral, mineral N, uh, but uh, uh, more and more frequently we see a request for people who are doing investigations in uh, um, uh, the uh, levels of phosphate in, uh, uh, in the uh, soil and this would be a really good tool to use if, if you are in that. There's a huge project uh, in uh, Spain, Portugal and uh, France now uh, to, to look at phosphates of uh, um, uh, agricultural land uh, and um, this type of system uh, uh, would be useful uh, for, for that type of study as well. Thank you. How are we doing for time? Good. We're, good. we're doing good for time. Yeah. So we're in the Gouge August next. Okay, I hope I've not <laughs> lost anybody so far. There might be a few uh, people asleep. Uh, okay. <laughs> we, we won't know about that. <laughs> uh, gouge augers. Can I put this? Uh, uh, gouge augers are a big word actually for a steel tube uh, uh, which is uh, cut in half longitudinally. And there are many different types. Um, uh, here we have a couple, and I particularly, uh, Icky is showing you that again they come with a disconnectable handle, but again it's purely uh, so that um, uh, so that it's easier to pack. It doesn't take as much room. It's not as expensive for packing. But in particular, I want to show you without trying to <laughs> knock me out. Knock you out. If I hold this. Uh, you, you can see, let's hold that uh, like that. Uh, where are we? I want to put it over here. You can see that the, uh, the edges are different. One is open and one is closed. So again, a two-case two uh, scenario where you have a, a, a tip which is uh, closed, which is completely round. This is where you have softish uh, sediments uh, which m m might otherwise be lost when you retrieve the, the, the sampler. And uh, for uh, more general cases, you have a sampler 
which is completely open at the, at the base, um, like this one here, um, where there is no ring. It's a little bit easier to insert this type of auger than the one with the ring, but there are both types because people work in, 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 uh, in uh, uh, cohesive materials and, and less cohesive materials. So there may be a, a choice to be made there of what it is that, uh, that, that you need doing. So with these single piece augers, um, they're 30 millimetre diameter and, and they're a metre long. Uh, you're more the expert than me on these. Uh, so Ricky. these are the uh, mini gouge augers. They look much bigger on the screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but they're about, um, the diameter is 16 millimetre. The um, gouge length is 25 centimetres and the total length is about 58, 59 centimetres. And um, we typically sell these for to the agricultural industry as well. Yeah, for, for a nutrient analysis, yeah. you don't need much sample for nutrient analysis. So it's, it's relatively narrow, uh, yeah. 16 millimetres. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's a tiny little auger, but uh, generally when you're, when you're testing uh, for agricultural land, uh, for uh, arable crops, you're, you're looking at 15 centimeter insertion depth. For grassland, you're looking at uh, uh, seven and a half centimeters, and you will. <laughs> uh, We've been told to look at the camera. There's yeah. just so many things to look at. I will try to look at the camera. I'm sorry, I, I did not wish to be impolite. I'm talking to myself rather than to you. <laughs> Which is not a good idea, but I got carried away because this uh, the, the little auger uh, is is really really handy. So normally you would take a composite sample of uh, uh, tw 20, 20 uh, uh, samples over a, 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 a homogeneous or relatively homogeneous field. You would mix them up, and that would go back to the laboratory for your nutrient, your major nutrient analysis, or indeed your 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 uh, your uh, your uh, uh, micro element analysis. Uh, really useful tool, easy to use. Uh, and uh, uh, this one is, is, is uh, coated, so uh, um, uh, we do this because it's a little bit easier to clean. You'll be taking a lot of repetitive, uh, repetitive samples. So mini, mini gouge auger, baby auger, baby auger. Yeah. and then really excited about this one, again. This is made especially for us. Made especially for us, again the handle comes off and this one's a slightly bigger diameter, it's 22 millimetre diameter, but it has a step. So you can step on it, take the sample, and you don't need to bend over. Well, it depends on how tall you are, really. No, but this is really <laughs> handy because uh, sometimes in this uh, stiffer materials, you're using your back to push mm -hmm. these things in, whereas, yeah. uh, uh, whereas uh, uh, like this, you put your, your, your big boot on yeah. that and uh, it, it makes it uh, a little bit easier to take yeah, the sample. Yeah, we quite get off to ask the augers. Uh, these are really nice, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Right, then for, uh, uh, and this is really for Pete, the gouge augers are, um, can I have that one as well? So. Uh, these are pretty well standard gouge augers, again tubes with a slot uh, cut into them, uh, stainless steel, uh, come in two lengths, uh, one, uh, uh, one meter, so I don't know if you can see this, but uh, no you can't, uh, it's, uh, it, there's a mark here, uh, the, the, the sample will, it's plugged, it, it won't go beyond that. Um, uh, one meter length, yeah, and 50, uh, 50 centimeters in length, um, and uh, in relatively uh, light material, you can go down very, very deep, and you can get a very, very quick sample. So you can imagine uh, uh, you push down a meter either with a standard handle or with the uh, um, uh, the ha ha uh, 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 handle with beating head or the slide hammer you can go down the full meter really, really quickly and you have this beautiful profile which you can then photograph, uh, subcategorize, subsample if you, if you need to. Uh, generally we'd recommend the 30, centimeter, uh, 30 uh, millimeters in diameter, it's a good compromise. There are some smaller ones, there are some bigger ones which I'll show you in a bit, but uh, uh, these will be good for most purposes. 
really, really important with any gouge type uh, auger, and that is that you that the chamber is filled completely. Because as you're inserting that, when you've uh, finished sampling, you will twist that. If you have not filled the whole chamber, the friction between the filled chamber and unfilled chamber is very different, and you'll start corkscrewing these. So where, where we get them back and they're corkscrewed, we know that it's because they've been partially filled. So really important with any uh, uh, gouge auger is to make sure that they inserted their, their, their full operational length right to the top, uh, twist 180 degrees, retrieve, and then you'll be fine. And then the big boys... Uh, For those of you feeling extra, extra strong. <laughs> how do you lift the things? Uh, sometimes you do need a big sample. And this one 60 millimeter diameter. A meter length? A meter length. A meter length. Uh, it's a really big boy. It's, it's actually quite heavy to use. And nonetheless, uh, uh, however, however we might try to dissuade people from uh, buying these, we still have a request, uh, a, a request for them. So, uh, um, uh, incidentally, all this material is in stock in the UK. Uh, uh, so we stock a limited quantity of these. We have five or six, I think, in yeah, stock, we, generally. Yeah, only for uh, this one. Uh, 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 but uh, um, it, it is a very uh, a specialist case where you really need a big sample um, uh, uh, and you would use, uh, you would use this, uh, this monster here. Um, Again, stainless steel and really robust. Yeah. Robust in as far as you fill it to its entirety, <laughs> and 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 you don't this use it. <laughs> you don't use it in in, in desiccated uh, uh, desiccated uh, uh, London clays um, uh, uh, half filled because it won't work very well. Um, moving on. Uh, Sorry, just to add to those, um, especially with the longer longer um, the longer gouge augers. Um, it's probably best to use the smaller handle. Yes. Yeah. If you're going to add, uh, add to but the little orange handle, it's just enough to to to, to, yeah. to push it down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, something that some of you might have seen and uh, some of you may not have seen. Um, there is so much going on in the study of uh, uh, nitrates, phosphates, and so forth, and. Taking soil samples is uh, one way, but where you want also representation of the, the pore water, so that is the water which lies in the pores of the sediment, uh, we have uh, some tools which are really, really interesting. And uh, um, uh, some researchers have used these by the th hundreds, thousands, I think. Um, very small, so you may just uh, not be able to see that. But these are these are actually samplers. Um, uh, inert an inert polymer, so going over the whole length of the sampler, uh, down to point, 0 0.2 micron uh, pore size, and these can be inserted in the soil, put under tension um, with for example, a syringe. So we tension that, so we insert that into the soil, we put them under tension with a syringe, leave them in place. I'm going to put that so that you, on the orange pit so you can see that. Um, and uh, you come back uh, after a week uh, or, 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 or whatever your sampling rounds are, and you will have collected the sample within that syringe and that can be taken back for analysis of things like nitrates, phosphates and so forth. Um, not all sampling exp uh, 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 equipment needs to be expensive and, and this is a very underutilized um, device uh, used very extensively by researchers, used far less frequently um, uh, by, by um, consultancies uh, uh, who um, may benefit from that to determine exactly what is happening within the salt pores, essentially the water which is available for the plant, uh, for the plant uptake. 
Um, they come in different sizes. Uh, they're pretty small, four, four millimeters in diameter. Uh, they are uh, available with, let's uh, grab a little packet here if you want to insert them deeper. Uh, just with a little capillary extension rod or with lure fitting so they all uh, clip together and uh, they're also available uh, this is for research it's not for field use uh, it is the the little uh, little baby actually called the standard rhizome which is absolutely minuscule uh, two, uh, two and a half millimeter in diameter and these are really useful for laboratory use in soil columns for example but uh, it's the it's the macro rise on this one here uh, which uh, I would uh, strongly recommend that uh, um, uh, that that you have a look at sometime because it's a very simple device it's very well priced uh, really cheap you can get repetitive samples from this from that all critical uh, um, uh, from that all critical uh, soil pore water so in the, from the saturated zone and the unsaturated zone, of course. Uh, finally, on that, if you need to go very deep, uh, these are also available uh, on a stick so that they can be inserted at a greater depth. So you, you pre-bore a hole and insert that. Normally we insert that in a, in, at a slight angle so that we're not under the effect of rainwater and something like that. You attach your, your, your little syringe to that. Um, one disadvantage of this, well there's a couple, uh, uh, one disadvantage is the sample size is, uh, is very small, uh, up to about 30, uh, 30 milliliters. I was uh, amazed by how much sample laboratory needs because when I, when I watch a crime series they can, <laughs> they can determine all manner of things from a, 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 drop, of, a drop of blood, but uh, uh, in our field we always seem to need liters, but about 30 milliliters is what you will collect, which will be uh, which will be good for most analytes. Completely inert, so it does not change the chemistry of the sample. Uh, so you can also measure pH uh, and 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 uh, um, the uh, uh, contrary to the ceramic versions, which will affect things like pH. These are completely inert. Rhizon samplers that come in packs of 10, I think. They come in packs of 10, that's the rhizons, including the accessories like the syringes and the extension tubing. As I said, uh, used very extensively, uh, I've lost where this comes from, Don't but it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, used very extensively in research for many, many, many years and uh, used far less in the, in the practical day to day. Uh, 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 consultancy field and uh, sometimes I wonder why that is especially when we talk about things like phosphates and nitrates which are uh, actually quite difficult and often very expensive to measure on site when actually you can capture the pore water which which would give you a really good indication of what the levels are of those uh, of those uh, 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 compounds or, or, or molecules so Vincent, are you done with the rhizomes? Yes. So that's the last on the list. So we didn't have it on our list, um, but the, we haven't got the equipment here because it's quite cumbersome. But do you want to talk a little bit about window sampling and the yeah. lost comb system? There, there is a question related to that actually. I'm yeah. wondering if I can just read it out. Yes. Um, it's, uh, it's by Rory Williams. Thank you, Rory. I was wondering whether you have a piece of equipment for aiding a user to extract a sample and pulling the sample out of the ground. I know for a percussion auger you have one. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, uh, Rory, is it? Yes. Uh, thanks, thanks, Rory, for the question. Um, uh, before we get on to, to the heavier equipment and window sampling, um, with, uh, can you bring me back the slide hammer? It's an important question for everybody actually because pulling out a sampler is actually quite difficult and, and, and that can, uh, that can uh, hurt your back. So if you're doing this day in, day out, repetitively, I think you've got to think of your back uh, because it, it does uh, give you some strain. Uh, going back to the handle choice, uh, that's to get it in of course, but take a, a handle such as a ratchet handle which, which will allow you to 
to, to penetrate in, in, in an easier way because you don't have to twist your body. But where you are driving in a sample, and, 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 and Rory, this is of course not for, for uh, the Dutch type augers, it, it won't work, but certainly for gouge augers, when you're using the slide hammer, uh, I, I was mentioning earlier that you can use it to insert your sample into the, into the soil, but you can actually reverse. reverse and that will assist you in lifting the device. So, um, uh, uh, in answer to your question, the, the slight hammer attachment, uh, particularly with any uh, uh, device, uh, in fact all devices apart from the, uh, from the hand augers, um, it's a really a useful accessory, including uh, the, the, the Russian Cora, Pete Cora, including all the gouges, including uh, the the um, uh, the uh, split tube sampler. Uh, I would recommend that for pulling out, you use you use this device. But also, uh, and I think, um, uh, have we got a bit of time? Yeah. Um, uh, also, uh, really to answer this question more fully, we, we were not able to show you. We didn't feel we had enough time to show you. Uh, a, a specific set uh, for sampling, uh, but not to very deep levels. Now I must stress that this is for light, uh, lighter soils, uh, and, and particularly not for stony soils. Uh, it's called a gas sampling set. It's, 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 a, it's a marriage between some equipment uh, from Australia, uh, some equipment, the Honda Drive, a very lightweight uh, percussive system, and that uses a, a type of um, uh, uh, almost a, a, a big version of a car jack, uh, which enables you to, to, to lever the sampler out of the ground. But I think the combination, usually when you're using a, a gouge auger, I would use the little slide hammer. This is a baby hammer, it actually doesn't weigh very much. Yeah, we have this especially made for us as well. Yeah, yeah so I think we have a heavier one as well. We do have a heavier one, but um, we, we wanted something that was quite compact, especially when people are out in the field and have quite a bit to carry anyway. Yeah. So maybe that's partially answered uh, Rory's uh, question. But are there any Rory, other... if you want to chat, please give me a call. Yeah. Give me an email me. Um, Sorry, that was about the... Maybe might move on to the window sampling. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, again, uh, just in very brief, uh, 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 because we, we we're coming to to the end of the session. Um, uh, how do you deal with heavy soils, uh, especially to depth? Uh, if you want to uh, uh, sample to depth in heavier soils, invariably. Uh, you, uh, and especially if you want undisturbed samples, so, so not semi-disturbed as you would use with the hand augers, but if you want undisturbed samples, you have to go to a mechanized version. And, and uh, uh, for, for the mechanized version, we would recommend uh, uh, what we call a window sampling set. I think it will be familiar to, to many of you. I'm going to show you, could you sh give me that uh, liner sample? We, we talked about line, liner samplers, um, but uh, we can do everything which we've shown you from the handheld devices, we can actually do with a window sampler. And this is a sample from, uh, f from outside here, which is very heavy clay. Uh, and we can, uh, we can replicate that in, uh, in a bigger version. So this is one meter sample, 50 millimeter in diameter, from a depth of two to three meters, something like that. And uh, typically, window samplers are used to depths of um, six to eight meters on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we have one uh, archaeologist uh, who was seriously told off by me, who, who was very proud and said he's gone to 19 meters. It's not 19. 19. Yeah, it's not made for that. It's actually <laughs> there's a health and safety issue in there. But window sampling uh, is. Uh, um, a step away, so as you, uh, it's the interface really between a hand auger system and a, um, and a drilling rig. So where you have to work in a restricted area, um, where you want very accurate undisturbed samples, the window sampler uh, is, is a, a, a really good, uh, good way to work. 
uh, especially where you can't get a bigger drilling rig and very often it's not possible the the, the uh, uh, access conditions are not uh, are not uh, good enough uh, um, so you're going from hand auger to as I mentioned earlier, a, half, a, a little halfway street, which is the a gas sampling set, a lightweight set, uh, also percussive, also uh, 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 mechanized, but very lightweight for the lighter soils. If you're going into heavy soils, then you need to look at something like the window sampling kit. But uh, when we look at the comparison, a hand auger weighs a couple of kilos. Mm -hmm. uh, a, even a small window sampling set uh, for, let's say, uh, uh, sampling to a depth of four or five meters will weigh 230, 250 kilos. So you look at the dimension and it is, it is a, a big step, uh, a big step uh, uh, upwards in all, in all directions. And, but if you need it, that is what you should, uh, that's, that's what you should be using. Um, we I do have another question from Debbie, um, it's a nice and quick one. Can these be used in subarctic conditions? Um, is that through heavy frost? Uh, um, well, if Debbie is back on the chat, could you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> could you come back to us on that one? Uh, 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 the, the answer is a, a, the answer is a, a cautious yes, uh, uh, and 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 they certainly um, hand augers have been used in in uh, um, subarctic conditions. But I'm just concerned if there's a, uh, if the question relates to can these go through ice? Uh, the answer is no. I think Debbie might also be asking about the window sampling set as well. Uh, if it's going through ice, Debbie, a window sampling set will not work either. <laughs> um, I have another question from Denis. Um, among the mentioned samplers, which ones are suitable for sampling in wetlands? Okay, good question. Uh, so uh, the um, uh, gouge augers are suitable for, uh, uh, for wetlands. The uh, uh, one that really is the highest recommended is the um, uh, Russian Cora. And uh, the one that probably none of you have seen, if you can bring that back up, is the lightweight aluminium uh, sampler, which I personally love. Uh, uh, this will be excellent for, uh, for your wetlands. Um, uh, it's a relatively new product, uh, very lightweight, and, and, and this is uh, really important for, for wetlands. You're going to have to walk a long way, and having done it several times, where, where your, your boots uh, sink, uh, sink uh, up to your knees in water, you do not want to uh, carry around heavy equipment. So I would, uh, I would uh, uh, think that this is probably uh, a, a, a really good uh, uh, tool for you and of course the Russian Cora as well although the Russian Cora is heavier by design but if you need line samples um, I think this is a this is a, a really good set. Uh, Debbie has replied to us um, so thank you Debbie which sampler is suitable for pesticide contaminated sites highly contaminated with compounding pesticides I mean Antarctica yeah, uh, uh, the uh, uh, two two samplers, Debbie, for that. Uh, I, I would say uh, to take one sampler with you, and that would be the split tube sampler. Really, really handy to take. Not uh, uh, not extremely heavy. Uh, you can take uh, line samples with it. Uh, a, a nice length, 40, uh, 40 uh, centimeters in length. Uh, so uh, that in combination with a. Uh, with a, um, a hand auger so that you can go beyond that if you need to go deeper and then when you've reached the horizon. But the, the pesticides, I suspect, would be fairly, uh, uh, fairly well towards the surface, although I, I don't know what research you're doing. But if, if you need to go deeper, uh, you can go down in the same hole, always in tranches of 40 centimetres, um, and you may just need to widen the hole so that you do not get the cross cross contamination between layers uh, and you would do that with a standard uh, a standard auger uh, so that would be a possibility uh, I think this uh, to take one tool this would be it the other one would it's quite a 
another thing to mention about this. We had these especially made so they'd be more lightweight yeah. and standard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other one is a soil recovery tool. If you just bring me the, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, the other one is, uh, Debbie, is this one here. Uh, uh, so that's the auger with a liner inside here. Uh, that is also really good for uh, pesticide resi residue studies. And uh, I think this would also work very well uh, in your conditions. The difference between the two is this. Uh, you can't strike on it. You've got you to rotate it. Uh, whereas with the uh, with the liner sample, uh, with the split tube sampler, you can hammer with it, and then you can use the force of the hammer to push the sampler back out of your uh, out of your sediment when you're finished. So, if I had to choose between the two, I would choose the split tube sampler. We have a question from Annette. Please, could you explain how best to extract a sample from the plastic liners for the sediment corers? Yeah. Um, uh, can I just have a, a liner? No, just a, a standard liner. Mm. So uh, here's a liner. Imagine that it's full. Uh, um, there are all manner of devices uh, available, and uh, some of them, some of them. Um, uh, uh, are based on uh, pushing out the sample. Now, I do not like the idea of pushing a piston uh, into this tube to push out the sample. And the reason I don't like it is that you're compressing the sample and therefore you're losing, you're losing the benefit of the undisturbed sample. And you really need to cut this longitudinally. And there's a, there's a young man, well, he's not so young anymore now, uh, 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 Rory Flood, uh, uh, who used to be at, uh, at uh, Queen's Belfast, who devised a system with a Dremel tool and just run a Dremel on the long edge of the, uh, of the sampling tube and split, split the liner into two. And, 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 and uh, that is a very easy way, a, a safe way to do that. I would sort of uh, keep away from using knives or saws, anything like that, a little Dremel tool, really cheap, they're what, 100 pounds from the, from the b &Q. Uh, just run that with the correct tip, you need the, the tip for plastics, and just run it, uh, run it longitudinally, just split the sample into two, and that's the best way. Try to avoid the pusher out of things, piston types, because you're compressing the sample and it's the last thing you want to do. Brilliant, thank you Vincent. I think we've come to the end of the webinar. Thank you so much everyone for joining us. Um, I hope that was useful for you but this isn't the end. Uh, we'd encourage you to call in, email me icky at and I'll get back to you all personally. Any questions put on the q and I'll also address those as well. But it's been a pleasure. Hasn't it Vincent? Thank you so much everyone. <laughs> I, 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 I admire your patience and resilience to uh, we, 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 we've we... I hope we didn't bore you too much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks very much.